Hey guys, Jacob CDF here, back with another video. And in today's video, we'll be talking about how you can prepare for NUS Computer Science in 2024 or whenever you're watching this video. So just a little bit of background of myself before we dive into the details. My name is Jacob, I'm a year two student. I'm studying business and computer science, double degree. And I came into NUS with no coding experience whatsoever. I really had no idea what computer science was about. And I sort of just took it to jump on the bandwagon, which I don't recommend that you do because reasons. So coming into university, the most coding I've ever done in my life was just scratch, you know, that cat. MIT thing. So what I'll be talking about in this video are just things that I wish I knew two years ago when I first entered. So I'll split this video into two parts. The first part will talk about what you should expect in your first year in NUS Computer Science. Then the second part will be what you can do to prepare for that. And this goes without saying that this is just my own personal opinion. So don't take it too seriously and take everything with a pinch of salt. Okay, so let's start. First of all, what should you expect in your first year of NUS computing. So I'll just go over the main modules I took in my year one and what you will probably be taking. I'll put some of the key concepts that were taught uh, on this side of the screen, but I'll just talk about my own personal opinions on them. So first up, we have CS1010S or CS1101S. It's the notorious introduction to programming module. And it's taught in NUS's own language, so you can't copy from the internet or whatever. And maybe you can't use ChatGPT. And yeah, workload is really high. So just know what you're getting yourself into. Next up is CS1231S, Discrete Structures. How I would describe it would be logic, but make it more maths. So there's a lot of proofs and everything. I think it's a module you can learn to enjoy, uh, but in that, a lot of people end up SUing it. But my personal advice for this module would be to just try your best and try to beat the bell curve, because I think it's, it's possible if like half the cohort SUs it. Those are all the CS1K modules. Then next up, you have your CS2K modules. So that would be 2030, 2040, and 2100. So this is usually called the Holy Trinity because the workload is super high. And if you do all of them at once, you're either crazy or you're just a CS genius. 2030 is the second part of 1101S, if you can say. So it's programming, programming methodology, but this time in Java. I would say it's really a big jump. This is where you start to code in the terminal, you use Vim and whatever. Yeah, I, I was just really lost for the first part of the semester. Next up is 2040, which is probably the most important mod for interviews because this is what your lead code and whatever interviews will be testing you on. It's a really important mod, but I, honestly, I found it super tough. And the workload is also pretty high as well because there's weekly or bi-weekly problem sets. Uh, and gamification is a lie because even though it was on cosmology, I was still stressed out the entire semester. Okay, now 2100. 2100 is where you realize that CS isn't just programming because in this module we learn about binary and how processors work and everything. So the content is really high, I would say. It's very dry also, there's a lot of things to memorize and it's very procedural. But I mean, you start to see the beauty of computers after you take it. And that's something I've started to appreciate. But that doesn't mean that I enjoy the mod. <laughs> and that's about it for the CS coded core courses you'll be taking then another aspect would be your math courses. One of them is MA1521, which is Calculus for Computing. First half of the semester is essentially just H2 math. So that's where people like slack off and don't put in enough effort. And then the second half is where it gets tough and just be prepared for that and try to keep up with all the content. Next up is MA2001, Linear Algebra. Um, it's one of the modules I took in year one that I I'm still not very confident in, honestly, uh, because everything is very abstract and it's very, and I find it hard to visualize. So I think your best friend here would be to go on YouTube and try to watch other explanations of it because sometimes how the prof explains it in the lectures may not be clear enough for you. And besides these two baskets of courses, you'll probably have other courses like your ethics, your ID and CD mods, but I won't really go into that. So now moving on to the second part, how can you actually prepare? So first of all, I think one of the best things you can do for yourself is to do CS50, the Harvard online course. It's free and it really gets you into the rigor of CS, such as writing your own code, debugging it, and trying to solve problems. Because something I realized really early on in NUSCS is that the language itself isn't that important because what they focus on are the concepts, like recursion, your algorithms, and whatever. And the language itself is just a way to express those concepts. So what's most important is you have a solid understanding of the concepts and 
I think CS50 really instills that, or at least it gets you a step further to understanding. The second thing is not so urgent, but if you have time, I think it would, it would be good to learn a bit of Java and object-oriented programming. Your oop. Especially if you have no programming experience, I think it will be quite a big jump when you start to take 2013 and 2014 in your second semester. So that's what happened to me. I mean, you can just imagine like the prof was teaching us how to do a binary search uh, in Java, and I was just trying to figure out like the, ex the syntax. And it's not an experience I would recommend, so you should try to prepare yourself for that. I mean, the best I can liken it to is like your teacher is asking you to write a good essay in Chinese, maybe but you're still trying to figure out how to write the characters itself. Like, it's not an experience I would wish upon anybody. And I think if you do these two things, you'll probably smoothen your transition into NUS computer science quite a bit. Those are some things that I wish I did. And just some final comments. Everybody knows that NUS computer science is super competitive. You walk into any classroom, I can guarantee you that at least half of the students there got 90 rank points or the international equivalent. And something I, was, I realized early on that I'm only starting to internalize it right now is that the grades in CS really aren't that important. I mean, statistically, you're graded on a bell curve, I think. And if your population is made up of 90 rank point students, I mean, somebody still has to fall uh, below the median or below the average or whatever. So just don't fixate too much on grades. Something I wish I told myself was to just try to enjoy the process of learning about computers, about algorithms, about how these devices work and everything. Because I think it's really beautiful. And I think if you can find a passion for it, find a genuine curiosity, it will eventually translate into you doing better for your exams, in a way. But anyway, you're still a few months away from NUS Computer Science. So my best advice is to just enjoy your time while you're still free. Cheers and see you in the next one.